So in this video, we'll be looking at this example ER model that we discussed about in the previous video, the textbook model. And we want to go ahead and look at this model. And what we're going to do is we're going to build this model in MySQL Workbench. So we're going to start by building it part by part. So first, we're going to bring up MySQL Workbench and we're going to start creating the model and we're going to focus on the publisher and textbook entity. So we're going to go ahead and um, create the publisher and textbook entity relationship um, diagram. So, so essentially we are looking at creating publisher and textbook entity. And as we can see, they are connected using a one to many maximum cardinality. Publisher ID is placed as a foreign key here. Publisher ID and ISBN are both numeric data type fields. It's also important for us to note that when we create the textbook entity in MySQL Workbench, publisher ID in the textbook entity needs to have the same data type as publisher ID in the publisher entity. So let's go ahead and let's bring up MySQL Workbench and let's see how we can do it. Um, so this is my MySQL workbench to create a data model. There's a number of different ways in which we can do that. Let's click on this um, model here. When you bring up your MySQL workbench, you're going to see this um, model area here. You can click on that. And in order to create a new model, you're going to see that you have this, I, like this button that says models and you have a number of different options here. Um, the first option here is to create a new model. If you already have an existing model that you've created, you can create on this folder symbol here. But since you're going to create a new textbook model, you're going to click on the symbol here and it's going to take you to this area here in MySQL Workbench as you can see here. So as you can see here, we have a new um, area for us to create a model. Um, by default, it's the new model, which is eventually we can make it a schema, is called as MyDB. So as a first step, we are going to change the name of this MyDB schema and make it textbook. So let's come here. And when you right click here, you're going to see an option that says edit schema. And you can click on that. It's going to open this area for you, MyDB schema. Click under name and you can backspace the MyDB and you can enter textbook um, DB there. So that would be your um, new textbook DB that you're going to give it a name for. So once you have done that, you can click on this X symbol there. And as you can see, it's changed your schema name um, from uh, to whatever you have named it to. And at this point, you are ready to create your diagram. So you can come here and double click on this add diagram area here. And when you do that, it's going to open this draw board for you, the diagram area where you can start creating your ER model, as you can see here. So you can hover across the panel here. You have a select object that's used for you to select your objects. You have your move model. Um, and if you hover your mouse, it gives you the option um, to see. It gives you um, what those different buttons do for you in your navigation panel here. So you can actually hover your mouse to see what the different options are here. So essentially what we're going to do is as a first step, we're going to create um, the publisher um, entity here actually. So to do that, we're going to come into our workbench and when you hover, you're going to see an option to place a new table. You can click there and click once inside your diagram and then it places a new table for you. The next step is to edit this table so that we can change it and give it the name publisher and we can start adding our attributes to this particular entity that we have added here. So to do that, we can come here and we can double click on this table one and when we do that, it opens up this area for us here where we can change the table name um, so I'm going to change the table name um, from table one and I'm going to backspace that and I'm going to type publisher here. So when I type publisher, it's going to change the name um, to publisher and now when I hit um, my X symbol here and if I do that now, it's going to change my sim, that entity and call it publisher. And you can actually 
um, come here to increase the size of this entity here and to go back and start adding our fields here. So as we can see, we have publisher ID, which is going to be the key for our entity, primary key. Then we have publisher name, address, city, and phone. When we have decided that these are all going to be data types. So now we can go ahead and we can start adding these fields to the entity. Um, so I'm going to come to my workbench and again, I'm going to click, double click on my publisher and you see here column name data type. It gives us the opportunity to start typing our attributes. I'm going to come here. ID publisher by default is the first um, attribute, which is your primary key. And we want to change it to call it publisher ID. And as you can see here, we can come and click on the next column. By default, the first field is the primary key and is assigned to be not null. Um, that's how it is. Um, and then we can start typing our next um, column name, which would be uh, publisher name. And then we're going to leave it as variable character. Note that if you click on this um, arrow here, you can click on it and you can change it to any of these other data types. Again, this would be a business decision that you would make during your uh, first few stages of designing or creating your database uh, model. So here, um, you know, we're going to come here and I'm going to start entering my next um, field, which is my publisher address. And I'm going to leave it as variable um, character as well. And then I have publisher city. Uh, which I'm going to enter here. So I have my publisher city, which is also variable character and publisher phone, which is also variable character. You can actually make changes to the number of characters that are reserved, change it from 45 to any number. Again, this would really depend on our requirements. So again, we have added all our fields. We have publisher ID, which is our primary key. And then we have added all the other assigned fields that we wanted to add. At this point, we can come and click on this X here and we can expand our entity. And then we have added our entity uh, with all the different attributes that we need. So now as a second step, we're going to add the next um, entity, which is textbook. So we can come here, which says place a new table and we can click in here once. So you're going to click here and click once and it places the next entity into our diagram area here. So now, just like what we did before, we're going to come here, double click on this table one, and I'm going to change that name to textbook because that's the next entity that I'm adding. And my column as my first column, I want my primary key ISBN. So I'm going to type ISBN there. And then I'm going to type title, um, edition, and then I'm going to add publisher ID as a numeric data type. So I've entered my uh, fields here. As you can see, I have my ISBN title edition. Publisher ID is set as int um, integer data type to match the publisher ID int data type here because this is assigned as a foreign key. So I can come here and I'm going to close my um, entity here. And I do have my textbook entity that I've added here. If you want to make it bigger, you can click on it and you're going to see these um, squares around it, which means that you can move, uh, move it or you can resize it. So now I do have my two entities here. I have publisher and I have textbook. So the next thing that I'm going to work on is ensuring that I'm adding a relationship between these two entities. So in order to establish a relationship, again, let's go back and look at what we have already um, um, decided to have as a relationship between publisher and textbook. Uh, we have decided that publisher and textbook has a one to many maximum cardinality. So therefore, textbook has the foreign key because we've learned that in a one to many relation, the many side gets the foreign key. So when we come back here, we have that all set here. And to your navigation panel, you're going to see a number of options. There's a number of different ways in which you can do that. For example, you see here that you have place a new um, non-identifying relationship. This is one way we can do that. In this way, MySQL automatically creates the foreign key. But in this case, we have already added a field as a foreign key. So we can use this option here that says place a relationship using existing columns. So I'm going to come here and click on that. And when I click, it's going to come and give me this option that says pick the referenced column, which means I'm going to pick my foreign key, which is publisher ID. So I'm going to click there 
and then it's going to ask me to pick um pick one or more columns to for the foreign key column so then i'm going to come here and i'm going to click on my publisher id and it establishes a one to many relations so the part is first we're going to click on our foreign key which is publisher id here and then we're going to come and click on the field that it's linking to which is the primary key in publisher so in this case we, we can see that it has established the correct cardinality which means that publisher can have many textbook textbook is associated with a one publisher so we have our one to many relationship that we have established here so now we can come and click on this relationship diagram we can right click and select edit relationship and when you do that you can come and click on this foreign key tab here and as you can see here it says reference table publisher and we have publisher id as our primary key and then it's referencing the table textbook foreign key is publisher id so you can see that this has been established now i want to point out that we have already established our one to many relationship here but for the minimum cardinality it has automatically made both of it mandatory so when we come here and when we look at our um, relationship the minimum cardinality is mandatory which is good but what if we had to change that this is the area where we can come to change that as you can see here this mandatory means if you uncheck this and close the relationship it changes this to optional as you can see here if that's not what we want but on the other hand we can come back here and click that back to mandatory now if we want to change if we ever needed to change this to an optional minimum cardinality for textbook we can uncheck that close that come here you see how it changes it so this is how we can change the minimum cardinality but in this case based on what we have established both of it is mandatory so we are going to come here and click on this mandatory mandatory and close it so this is important to understand where you can go in case you need to change the minimum cardinality so we have actually created this um er part of our er model where we have created the er entity i mean the entity publisher textbook we had added all the fields and we see we saw how we can establish a one to many um maximum cardinality between these two entities